Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people saying, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Oreb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks Mr. God.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free from anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame is spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee, the Gospel of the Lord. When Christian Herder was governor of Massachusetts, he was running for a second term in office. One day after a busy morning chasing votes, he arrived at a church barbecue. It was late afternoon and Herder was famished. As Herder moved down the serving line, he held out his plate to the woman serving chicken. She put a piece on his plate and then turned to the next person in line. Excuse me, Governor Herder said. Do you mind if I have another piece of chicken? Sorry, the woman told him. I'm supposed to give, give one piece of chicken to each person. But I'm starved, the governor said. Sorry, the woman said again, only one to a customer. Governor Herter was a modest and unassuming man, but he decided this time he would try to throw a little weight around. Do you know who I am? He said. I am the governor of the state. The woman looked at him and said, Do you know who I am? I'm the woman in charge of chicken. <laughs> the moral of the story is that having authority, real or imagined, will not necessarily get you more chicken. What does the story in this evening's gospel tell us. Picture yourself sitting in the synagogue in Capernaum when the visiting rabbi comes in. Yawn, another visiting missionary. You know he's gonna say, do good stuff, don't sin, send money. But even before he says one word, he fo you focus on his eyes and they stare right into your soul. And with a clear voice he says, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the good news. What, what, where, now, who, me, what? I was watching an interview with Ralph Martin, a well-known Catholic author the other day, talking about the problems in the church today. 
And he emphasized, and this caught my attention, that it's not about left wing versus right wing or doctrine or dogma, but being a member of the Catholic Church is all about following Jesus. And what is it that Jesus is asking him to do, asking us to do? Follow him. And how do we follow him? Repent and believe the good news. I think there is a danger in dwelling on the issues the church faces today that allows us to think that that's all there is. But in all of that discussion and debate, have I examined my own conscience to see where I have failed to live up to my baptismal promises and repented of those failures? The command of Jesus to repent is not simply a matter of saying I'm sorry, but a sincere effort to confess my sins and not to commit them again. That's what the good news is all about. Jesus came into the world to reconcile us all to himself, to be one with him, one with his Father, one in the Holy Spirit. Jesus did his part by coming into history. Our part is to recognize when we fail to live up to what God asks of us and to repent of those failings. 30 years ago, a Protestant minister renewed a popular slogan and even had it put on wristbands. I have to be honest that I thought it was a little hokey at the time. But when one is unsure of a course of action, the phrase, what would Jesus do, is a powerful reminder of what we, as his followers, must be about. For as the Gospel taught us, teaches us this morning, Jesus taught with authority. His words were true. His words were life. And it wasn't just his manner of speaking and teaching. The Jews in the synagogue witnessed exactly why Jesus had this authority. When the demon addresses him and identifies him, Jesus exercises the demon simply by ordering him to be quiet and come out of the possessed man. It is no wonder that all were amazed. So too should we be amazed. And what are we to do with this amazement at the power of Jesus, who has called each one of us here this evening to follow him? That's what our baptismal promises were all about. The message to repent is not popular because it means I have to acknowledge my own imperfections, my own failures to live as Jesus did, to verbalize those failures in the sacrament of reconciliation, and strive not to commit those same sins again. Repent and believe the good news. Make the words of Jesus and the gospel your guiding light as you wander the torturous pathways of today's world. Don't be afraid to ask yourself when confronted with tough choices, what would Jesus do? Particularly if they had choices that may lead you into sin. For even in 2021, with all of the sin and evil that we are confronted with, the message of this wandering rabbi is still the same. Repent and believe the good news. Believe especially in the one with authority over all things in this world and in the world to come. God bless. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
heaven is he at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with confidence, we place before our Heavenly Father all our needs and petitions. That the church always keeps with authority and compassion of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil leaders watch over the welfare of those whom they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That victims of violence and war experience the blessings of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the faithful departed, especially Emma Rowe Vanderhan, Diane Palacic, Gerard Cody, and Francis Sammet, they rest forever in the peace of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us entrust these petitions to Mary, the mother of God, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim.
you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially at this Mass, we remember Diane Palachik, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in this sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, O those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship, with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. This Wednesday is the Feast of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, and traditionally every year we offer the blessing with the blessed candles, but obviously due to the restrictions, we're not allowed to do so this year. However, I will still impart the special blessing of St. Blaise this evening. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop, and Martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that.